Welcome back to our garden at Marion Street. I'm Miss Lauren, and today we're going to be exploring the garden ecosystem. But before we get started, we're going to go over some important terms. So, follow me, and we'll get started. So let's start by defining what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is a community of living things that all work together. Today, we're going to explore what makes up a garden ecosystem. But before we do that, can you think of other examples of an ecosystem? Hmm. Well, what I like to think of ecosystems, in an easy way that I remember the definition, is thinking of a neighborhood community. Let's explore the different professions that our community members have to help our neighborhoods, neighborhoods run smoothly. What comes to my mind first is construction. <laughs> Can you hear it in the background? Well, we wouldn't have all our buildings and houses and coffee shops and delis without construction workers. How about farmers? Our farmers help bring food to our tables. Let's, what else? We have our teachers that help us learn different things. And we have our artists that help create beauty in our neighborhoods. Can you think about other members of the neighborhood ecosystem and who might contribute? How might you contribute to the neighborhood ecosystem? Let's apply all these concepts as we dive deeper and learn about the garden ecosystem. In a garden, teams work together to move energy from the sun all the way through the ecosystem so that everyone in the community can digest the sun's energy as food and turn it into fuel. It's true. All living things in a garden rely on energy that originally came from the sun, us included. This diagram demonstrates how it works. Allow me to introduce you to the garden ecosystem teams. Producers are plants. They use energy from the sun to make sugar, which they then use as fuel to grow and thrive. This happens through a process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is illustrated in the diagram on the right. In addition to producing sugars for the plant to grow strong, a byproduct of this process is oxygen, a very important compound for our survival. Producers are the building blocks of the entire ecosystem. But let me tell you about the other teams that depend on them. Primary consumers eat plants. They benefit from the fuel that the team of producers stored up in their bodies as sugar. Primary consumers get to use this fuel for themselves when they consume and digest plants. Primary consumers include rabbits, caterpillars, aphids, and squirrels. Can you think of any other primary consumers that might be a part of the garden ecosystem? Next in our garden ecosystem, we have secondary consumers. Secondary consumers eat primary consumers, benefiting from the energy that their prey received from producers. Secondary consumers include dragonflies and spiders, which eat other insects, birds, which also eat insects, and foxes, which eat rabbits. Higher up the pecking order, we have tertiary consumers. Tertiary consumers eat secondary consumers, taking the energy that originally came from the sun even further up the food chain. Tertiary consumers include hawks and owls, which eat smaller birds, who ate insects, who ate plants. In some cases, animals can count in more than one category. Our fox, for example, is considered a secondary producer if it ate a rabbit that only eats plants, but it's a tertiary consumer if it eats a bird that ate a bug that ate a plant. One important thing to remember 
is that the higher you go up the food chain, the less efficient the energy transfer. This means tertiary consumers need to eat more to get the same amount of energy from their food. One thing to remember about the circle of life is that everything must die, and from that, new life can form. Our friends, the decomposers, break dead things down to make soil. Decomposer examples include worms, mushrooms, crickets, and centipedes. They help break down things like logs, leaves, feces, and dead animals, recycling everything into nutrient-rich soil that can bring new life into being, which creates more members for the producer team. And that's how the transfer of energy works. It starts as energy from the sun, which the producers convert into fuel. That fuel makes its way up the food chain and then gets recycled back down into healthy soil. Now think about this. Which ecosystem team are you on? Do you eat only plants, making you a primary consumer? Or do you eat plants and also animals? Many humans are omnivores, which is just a name for living things that eat both. If you eat producers, primary consumers, and secondary consumers, then you're a tertiary consumer. No matter where you land on the food chain, we are all a part of the garden ecosystem. So our first stop in our garden, we could really go anywhere. Because if we're looking for producers, those are plants. And as you can see, they're all around us. We have our rosemary, our oregano, our asparagus, our lamb's ear, and so much more. Our plants are an important member of our garden ecosystem because they provide the basis for the ecosystem and provide life to everything in the garden. So you know a great place to look for insects in the garden? One place is underneath logs. Insects underneath logs, they are considered decomposers. Let's get a closer look. Let's see. Do we see any insects? Right there. It's a little scared, it's scurrying away. But it's breaking down the log so that slowly we can return more soil to the ground. spot our two bird friends here? It looks like one of them has a little something in its mouth. I wonder what it's going to do. Our bird friends are pretty active in our garden today. Let's get a closer look. What our robin friend over here is doing is it's looking for food. Do you know what it might be looking for? What do we have here? I spot a yellow jacket, and if it's not pollinating our collards, it might be looking for eggs to prey on. Now that we've explored various members of the garden ecosystem team, I don't think we've identified a tertiary consumer in the garden ecosystem that's here today. Well, you're looking at one. What makes me a tertiary consumer is whenever I eat chicken that happened to have eaten a bug, which that bug probably ate a plant, that makes me a tertiary consumer. But say I ate a cow. Cows only eat grass and other grains, so I guess that would make me a secondary And whenever I have a vegetarian meal or a vegan meal, I then am a primary consumer. 
but we are we are an important member of the garden field system. Thank you all for joining me on yet another virtual field trip. Before I leave you all, let's ponder one last question. Where might the members of our ecosystem that we learned or saw here today, what position might they occupy in our ecosystem flowchart? Then, once you're done pondering that question, I want you to go walk around in your neighborhood if it's safe or look out your window and see what um, signs of wildlife you can identify. I want you to sketch it, be patient, draw carefully, and when you're done, send over your sketch to Nicole at cityblossoms.org so that we can feature you, up, feature you and your drawing on our Instagram. So until next time, see you later.